Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. In a very uh, cold, wet, windy evening for the field test of the Army Tech Crystal. I was asked to review this slide and I do try to accommodate these requests when, whenever I can. I was also very interested in the light for my own purposes in uh, wilderness search and rescue. I have a frequent need for auxiliary and emergency lighting. I'll talk about some of those use cases uh, later in the evaluation. I also think this is an interesting light for just day hikers, uh, people who really don't plan on getting caught out at night, but most of the people that I've had to assist in uh, night search and rescue never planned on being out at night. And so this is something that could, uh, you know, be part of a simple night kit, something that you just uh, keep in your pocket uh, on the strap of your uh, backpack or something so that if you get jammed up and you're caught out in the dark and you need that extra lighting, you've got something on you other than a cell phone. Now, in the next chapter, I'm going to go over just two or three of the features that I like about this light, and then we'll get out in the field and start the testing. Well, the first two things I like about this light are size and weight. The very compact, very light. That takes us into mounting options. There are just a number of ways that you can mount this. So I'm not going to spend all the time right here. You've got a potentially removable clip on the back. It can be mounted as an improvised headlamp. If you don't have an extra headlamp strap, don't worry. One is provided for you. It has uh, four basic modes, Firefly, Main 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I would probably call them low, medium, and high. Dual mode lights, there are a number of options. I'm going to be evaluating the white, red tonight. So this has both white and red options. The white goes from uh, basically a fraction of a lumen in Firefly to 148 lumens in uh, the high mode. Probably be looking almost predominantly at uh, medium and high tonight. The other thing I like is that the uh, red goes up to 30 lumens. That's pretty respectable for a red light, especially for something uh, this small. Now it's just starting to rain again. I think that's good because uh, give me a chance to test the IP67 rating along with uh, some of my other rain gear. But you're probably uh, tired of listening to me talk, so let's let the sun go down a bit more. When it gets dark, we'll get out in the field and see exactly what this light can do. All right, let's look at operation real quick. It's one button, quick click to turn on, remembers the last mode, in this case, a uh, high white, press and hold, and that cycles through all the modes. Then release when you find the mode you want, Double click takes you to the auxiliary, in this case, red mode. Then press and hold to cycle through the red modes. Then quick click off. So this is low mode at uh, ground level attached to the right front strap of my ruck. Should be a decent mode for, uh, you know, very close proximity lighting in a campground or tent environment. Okay, I'm stepping back to a good five yards. We're in medium. Same test. There's what it looks like from approximately ground level. Next, we'll do high. Okay, here we are in high mode at essentially ground level. This is something I do a lot in search and rescue. I transition from the search phase into the rescue phase. I put my 
pack down somewhere and I just need, you know, immediate area lighting to take care of a person who may be injured right in here. And so that's what it looks like. Okay, I carry uh, Ranger bands, all sorts of Velcro straps. What I'm using here is uh, Army Tech provides a couple of uh, rubber bands that you can use for a number of mounting options, and I've simply mounted that to a uh, tree branch that's in beacon mode, wide, of course, and I'm about 25 yards away, and I've moved off kind of into the bush here. I could keep moving. I could, I could see that, you know, as someone involved in search and rescue. If you had this in your kit and I was searching for you, I could see that from a pretty considerable distance. Now we'll do some red mode tests. Okay, this is red in high mode. I'm about three. Let's move back. I'm a good four feet from that sign right now. Move back a little more. There we go. Then move back in. Once again, tree mounted approximately 25 yards. That's uh, red beacon mode. Well, I've got one or two more tests I'd like to do, then I'll head back to the truck, do one example of uh, searching for something around the truck in a low mode, and then we'll do a quick wrap up. So this is a case where I have the light mounted on the other side of my ruck. So I, I have my uh, search and rescue rig set up so I can mount on uh, both sides of the ruck. And so this is simulating a situation where even though I've got it propped up on a bench right now, there are a lot of times out in the field, uh, especially if I'm close to a tree line, I can hang my ruck off of an old tree branch, something where I can get it elevated. So this is kind of an area lighting example. I may be seven, eight yards away right now, and I'm going to move on down the path. Okay, so that's just an example of uh, what it looks like from more of a distance in an area lighting uh, scenario. So, so here's something else I wanted to show you. If you're trying to uh, follow a path using this light, uh, I have this at roughly waist level right now. I think this is a lot better for seeing what's right in front of you getting more ground detail of course i'm in high mode right now so that's one of the nice things about all the mounting options you can mount this on your belt on a belt loop might have be able to mount it on uh, part of a pocket you got a lot of options there so i just wanted to show you this uh that's another option in case you get one of these. Head high may not work as good as waist high. All right, we're back in the parking lot. I'm simulating using the uh, medium mode for just searching for something around my uh, vehicle. Of course, you can take this completely hands-free all right, move it down low, up higher. I mean, just uh, too many options for me to uh, enumerate. Plenty of places you can store it. If you're worried about it being in a, in a bag inside your pack and accidentally turning on, it does have lockout. Um, Overall, I'm very, I'm very pleased. This worked a lot better than I thought it would. Let's, let's actually move off the parking lot to a less perfect environment out here in the field. Again, this is just that, uh, that medium mode.
Yeah, I'm pretty convinced with the performance and all the ways I can mount and carry this. Uh, here comes the vehicle behind me. Might have gotten a brief flash of light from that. Okay, it's passed. Yeah, I mean, I, ca I can't live with just one. I've got to, I've got to get another. I'm going to have one mounted on the uh, right strap of my ruck as an emergency light for use as a uh, backup area lighting, uh, beacon. I'm probably going to carry one in the back uh, to enhance area lighting as well as when I'm working with training other people. I like to have a unique colored marker on the uh, back of my ruck, and we typically use chem lights, but it's often hard to get a unique chem light color, so I could just uh, put that red light on in a, a low to medium mode, and that would be perfect. Yeah, pretty much the only thing I don't like about it is uh, micro USB charging. But uh, maybe if they come out with another version of this, they'll have uh, USB-C, uh, maybe even uh, kick it up a little bit. And, you know, this would be absolutely the perfect light. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely surprised me tonight. I, I thought I was going to have a lot more to say about it being underpowered. But uh, this is why I do field testing. Uh, I hope you found what you're interested in here if you're considering this light. And... As always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.